This video is brought to you by support from viewers like yourself through Patreon. Last year, I was at shows, audio shows, and I saw Boris in almost at every show. When I heard them at shows, the first impression I got was that it's such a unique sound. It's tactile, it's clean, it's impactful. It is something that is quite extraordinary in terms of the sound signature. So I was definitely interested in getting the speaker in, not just because they're Boris and loudspeakers, but they are one of the most affordable options from the Boris and lineup. It's the newest series as well. They're the X series, so that's the newest lineup they have. And despite the X series being the lowest of the lineup on the Boris and series, this is a $8,800 loudspeaker. However, a lot of the technology from their higher end series that costs an arm and a kidney, and in my case, two kidneys, uh, it does have a lot of technology trickled down from their much more expensive loudspeakers. And some of my friends have been raving about it, saying that this is in fact the best bargain in all of hi-fi right now even at $8,800, not a cheap chunk of change, but they're saying that the performance matches up three or four times above this price point. So we'll definitely put that claim to the test. Maybe I'm a little biased because of the carbon fiber finish. I'm a big fan of carbon fiber. But personally for me, every single time I look at the X2s, it reminds me of the feel and touch and the quality I would get from much higher and high priced gear or speakers. In terms of the drivers, the Borson X2 loudspeakers feature a planar ribbon tweeter with a waveguide that helps directivity and dispersion, allowing you to have a much wider sweet spot. Right below the tweeter is a very cool looking 4.5 inch Borison mid-bass driver. And right below that is another bass driver that is also 4.5 inches. These mid-bass and bass drivers feature a X-series membrane that consists of three skin laminated into a single unit two layers of spread carbon fiber with layer of aramid honeycomb spacers in between. Borison claims that this structure allows them to have the best ratio between weight and stiffness so that you have a rigid driver, a very strong driver, but also light so that it's responsive and speedy at the same time. Now, to be completely fair, they're not the only manufacturer to have drivers like this with a goal of achieving great stiffness to weight ratio. There are other manufacturers that does the similar thing. However, what makes Boris and loudspeakers special is that all of their drivers are designed and made in-house, giving them the ultimate flexibility between quality control as well as designing to their heart's content. And in my opinion, that flexibility of being able to design everything in-house is not something to be overlooked or taken lightly, as this is something that differentiates a lot of brands from just mass-produced products out there. Aside from that, these Boris and loudspeakers do not come with spikes, which I kind of love, uh, it comes with a simple metal feet that feels great and looks great. But I also noticed that this gives really good stability to the loudspeakers. So if you have pets or children running around in your listening room, then probably a good feature to have. It also features this very interesting looking ports at the back. So this is a base reflex design and it has three ports at the top and three ports at the bottom. Now, personally, I'm a little bit skeptical and worried about this design as the ports are quite small. And my concern is that that may cause port chuffing, but we'll check that out in a bit here. As well as checking and testing how far we can push these speakers towards the wall without getting that boomy unwanted resonant bass. For my first listening, I really wanted to test these speakers with the AGD monoblocks that I have, the AGD audience. And since they were already hooked up, it was perfect for me to just start playing music right away. The Borson X2 loudspeakers are rated at 88 dB in sensitivity with a nominal impedance of 4 ohms and recommended amplification is 50 watts or more. So the AGD audience shouldn't even break a sweat, pushing 200 watts into 4 ohms. Oh, and I almost forgot, I am using the Orender N20 as a source and the streamer with DPS Audio Ghost Stellar DAC and I'm also using the volume control in it, so using it as a preamplifier as well in this case, going balanced in to the AGD audience. Wow, first of all, I wish this was my permanent speaker system setup. Easily top three of my favorite speaker system setup I've done in this room since I started my YouTube channel three, four years ago. And I know that's a big praise coming from me, but honestly, it suits my taste so very well, the system right now. 
First of all, I have the speakers about three and a half feet away from the wall behind it to the front of the baffle of the loudspeaker. And that's my usual, usual starting spot and I adjust from there. Now at three and a half feet away from the wall, I still get incredible bass, incredible extension, amount in bass, quality in bass. Like I said, extension, I feel like the speakers go down below 30 hertz in my room absolutely without even breaking a sweat. I'm actually a little bit afraid to push these speakers further back into the wall behind it because of the sheer amount of bass I'm getting at three and a half feet away from the wall. But we will definitely try and see how that goes. Now, if you remember, I was a little bit worried about those small ports at the back because small ports, narrow ports, tend to chuff at times when pushed to loud levels. I crank these up 90 dB, peak 100 dB levels on my sound meter and playing really the bass demanding tracks, torture tracks I call it, um, I heard zero chuffing, zero issues with the port design. So at least how I play music and pertains to how I enjoy music, I'm not hearing any port issues with these loudspeakers and the bass is really, really textured and nuanced. And if you're someone that is a, a somewhat of a bass connoisseur like I am and cares about the quality of bass as well as the quantity of bass in your system, I definitely recommend these loudspeakers for you. Uh, I do not feel like I need subwoofers with these speakers whatsoever. I will say though, if you are coming from a 15 inch or 18 inch big loudspeaker uh, drivers in a speaker, you are not gonna get that air movement and if you heard a speaker with 15 inch, 18 inch drivers designed well, then you know what I'm talking about. That air movement, that pressurization, isn't quite there with these loudspeakers and that is expected considering that these have 4.5 inch woofers in them. And you know, considering that they're doing an excellent job in creating that extension and quantity and quality of bass, but you're just simply not gonna get that air movement you would get from a much larger woofer. And simply in this case, there is no replacement for displacement. But otherwise, even if you are coming from 15 inch, 18 inch, much bigger loudspeakers, these do have the dynamics and they do have that satisfying bass quantity and quality that even the bass heads will appreciate. Now talking about the mid range and the treble quality, overall the tonality is on the slightly on the warmer side of neutral, which is perfect for my taste. Now, when it comes to the mid range, it's full sounding, it is meaty sounding. Uh, there's a lot of meat and body to the sound in the mid range with the AGD pairing. Both mid range and high frequency has a lot of nuance and uh, you know little details floating around you, but you do not get any sharpness. So if you're someone that is very prone to uh, high frequency fatigue, like all the s -t -t, right, vocal sibilances or guitar string sibilances, and if you're prone to that and you don't like that in your music, this allows you to hear that in a much more refined way. Remember my AGD monoblock review and what AGD monoblocks bring to the table in this system. AGD monoblocks tend to bring refinement in the mid range and high frequency, making things smooth and refined, but not taking away from the fidelity and the detail retrieval factor, which again is a hallmark of a great amplifier. So in the end, what I'm hearing in the system is a super refined mid range and high frequency that is never bright, never sharp, but I'm getting all the details I need. And to that point, some systems that are warm can be a little bit uh, lost in fidelity, I would say, especially at lower volumes. But because this is again, just refining things, but not necessarily taking away the fidelity aspect or the detail retrieval aspect, even at low volumes, I'm getting really good bass textures and detail and everything that I talked about at high volumes or medium volumes, um, the fidelity is intact all the way through. So really great if you like warm sound, first of all, you have to like warm sound, then you will appreciate that these speakers sound just, the, just as good at low volumes as it does at high volumes. And again, to that point, because it's not taking away the fidelity, even though it's warm and there's no edge around the instruments, it's super smooth, there's no digital edge feeling or edged out sound that you would get from let's say Magical Focal or some more edged out speakers. If you like that, if you like a little bit more in your face, a little bit more brighter sounding, a little more detailed oriented sound, then this is probably not the sound for you. However, when it comes to the imaging aspect, even though it is a warm sounding system, because it retains that fidelity with the AGD monoblock pairing, 
I get dead locked in center phantom imaging with really musical vocals, uh, really connecting me to that music. Female vocals, male vocals coming through the middle, locked in center, and to the side, I hear the instruments, very well separated, very well placed, and I can really tell where the instruments are. Very, very well separated and not crowded whatsoever. Soundstage is adequate. I don't feel like it's too intimate, but it's not as wide or deep of a soundstage as a bookshelf speaker or let's say a really good uh, horn speaker. However, it is still a wider and a deeper soundstage I'm hearing than I, what I would get from a much larger loudspeaker in this room like Wilson Audio, uh, Focal, or Magico, the larger variety of speakers. These are slim loudspeakers, the X2s, and therefore they are allowing to give that sensation of width and depth that is, in my opinion, superior to the bigger loudspeakers out there. It just disappears better, and that's the physical aspect of these loudspeakers. So it's a bit of a trade-off, right? So you're not getting as of a wide soundstage or deep of a soundstage as a bookshelf speaker, but even the most competent bookshelf speaker in the bass region, like the Bocard S400 or the S400 Mark II for that matter, do not even come close to the dynamics, bass control, extension, texture uh, that the X2s provide here. The reproduction of bass is just not even close when it comes to that region. The macro dynamic capability of the X2s are actually more comparable to much bigger loudspeakers from like Wilson Audio, Sonos Faber, Totem, and the list goes on at Rockport. So these are, in my opinion, giving off a scale and bass dynamic reproduction that is equivalent to much larger loudspeakers, yet retaining a much wider soundstage and depth in soundstage than those bigger speakers would do in my room. Now I'm quite excited about my next pairing and that is the Forte One. This is the all-in-one integrated amplifier they were using at the show. So I'm gonna play around with it for a few more weeks and see how it fares and compares to the AGD monoblock pairing with the X2s. So now this is interesting. I'm getting a totally different sound than I got with the AGDs. I mean, this is like almost a completely different loudspeaker now. Now remember, I am bypassing my Arender N20 streamer and the PS Audio DAC and replacing it with this all-in-one box that has a streamer built in. So it's just this one box with the Borson X2 loudspeakers and this integrated is called the Forte One by a company called AXXES. And it's the same company as the Borison. It's under all the same company called Audio Group Denmark. And in actuality, this is what I heard at the show. This is more close to what I heard at the show. The, the initial sound that drew me in, the unique sound that I was talking about. Immediately, I'm getting more tactility. A little bit of reduction in the overall amount of bass overall in comparison to the AGD. But now I'm getting more punchy, dynamic, quick, fast, transient bass. The microdynamics start to really come through and hit you in the chest. It's really, really nice in that way. Very clean bass now, uh, mid bass especially, very clean cut, quick, like snap, hits you in the chest, and it's done. The smoothness I talked about with the AGD monoblocks no longer exists with the Forte One pairing. Instead, what I get is a more crispy, more detailed oriented sound. Again, that quick transient response that I'm getting from the bass is also translated in the mid range and the high frequency. And now I really feel like I'm hearing a planar ribbon tweeter, especially in the high frequency. It's not bright um, in, in all grand scheme of things, it's not bright, but it is a brighter sound than the AGD. It is more detailed focused. So it's not necessarily that it's more detailed than the AGD in my opinion, but it is just a little bit more forward, giving you a little bit more sensation and focus and highlight in that kind of region. Very snappy, very responsive, very quick, great separation. Now the overall sound and tonality is slightly leaner than with the AGD pairing, quite noticeably actually. However, that actually aids in the separation of things. So I feel like I'm getting more clean, black separation between instruments. It's very clean cut separation where I can draw things out. So if you're a fan of, again, Focal, Rockport, Magico, those kind of speakers, you will be a fan of this type of presentation in my opinion. 
Now, which is opposite of what I said with the AGD pairing. So that's what I'm saying. This is almost a 180, almost a totally different loudspeaker. Now, I will say though, if I have to critique, right, it's not necessarily a criticism here, but a critique in terms of my taste, I do find that the upper mid-range in comparison to the AGD is slightly dry sounding to me and detracting from that musicality aspect. But I have to really choose the right tracks and really listen for it for me to get that sensation of that slight dryness. So not a huge concern or, or a reason to not get this pairing. Unless of course you really like a liquid fluid sound, then I would definitely suggest that the AGD pairing is a better pairing. The soundstage is also very interesting. The width of the soundstage is slightly reduced from the AGD pairing, just slightly. So width is not as wide, but the depth in soundstage is noticeably deeper with the Forte 1, uh, by I would say maybe a few feet deeper. And so if you like and enjoy a deeper soundstage, but still want a adequate width and soundstage, but don't mind having slight reduction in the width in comparison to something like the AGD, then the Forte 1 makes a lot of sense with the X2s. Now I may be sidetracking here a little bit, but I do want to say this. So I have experience with Rider Hall speakers, which are very similar to the Boris and Lau speakers in that the designer behind Rider Hall speakers few years back was Michael Borison. Sound familiar? Yes, that's the designer for the Boris and loudspeakers now. And with those rider hole speakers, what I found was that a lot of the amplifiers I tried with it simply just didn't work. It didn't sound great to me. However, when I paired name amplifiers with rider hole speakers, it just changed my perspective on rider hole speakers. That synergy was made in heaven. And it gave a similar thing as it did here. That kind of transience response, that micro detail that really brings the best out of the speakers and the reason I bring it up is because this pairing with the Forte 1 with the X2 is reminding me a lot of what I got with the Rider Hole with the name gear. Now the difference here is between Rider Hole and the Borison seems to be that the X2s surprisingly pairs really well with a variety of different gear in comparison to Rider Hole speakers. The Rider Hole speakers in my opinion were not listenable with a lot of different gear. Now we have to try tubes, don't we? We can't just try solid state amplifiers and integrated amplifiers. We must try tube amplifiers with these. And what better choice than a very classical tube sounding tube amplifier like the Dynaco ST70. And this is exactly why you get tube amplifiers. I love tube amplifiers and it puts a smile on my face every time I hook it up. First of all, sound staging. Definitely a big reason to go tube with the X2s. Uh, definitely getting a little bit wider and deeper sound staging, but more than anything, it just feels and sounds more holographic and spacious to me, even though it's not a, actually a huge increase or decrease in the sound staging department. Bass is interesting. And that definitely, I believe, has something to do with the upgrades done to this ST70. I'm getting this very earthy uh, increase in the 200 hertz region. So the male vocals sound more earthy, more gut to the sound. That fatherly voice. I am your father, Luke. And of course, you get that exaggeration in that range with other vocals and instruments as well in that region. So I need you to hear this track, by the way, if you ever get to try the X2s with the Dynaco SC70 with these upgrades, then I definitely need you to try this track because it's goosebumps, man, goosebumps everywhere. And the sub bass is interesting as well. Yes, you're getting a bit less sub bass in comparison to the AGD and the Forte 1, but overall still very impressive. Yes, the sub bass presence, the overall linearity is not there in comparison to the Forte 1 and the AGD once again, however, it's weird because the lower octaves, like the, the doom effect, right? When it comes to music, yeah, you get that still. It's weird though, cause you don't get the entirety of the sub bass region. It's just that the lower octave, the lowest of the octave, like 20, 30 Hertz region, where there's like the doom, right? That's what you, what you get, but you don't get the rest of the presence of the sub bass as you do with the AGD and the Forte 1. I'm very impressed with this pairing. I think this is a great sounding pairing, especially if you're someone who's getting into tube amplifiers and just want something that sounds very tube amplifier-like, but also don't want to sacrifice too much of the bass performance. I think this is a great pairing with the X2s. However, I will say it is the least of my favorite out of the three that we have tried today, just because that mid-range and high frequency is very magical, but 
on the higher ranges, especially when you crank up the volume, the edges around the instruments and vocals become a little bit unrefined and gritty. So in comparison to the AGD and the 41, again, so we're comparing it to much higher end units and therefore you're definitely gonna get less refinement and you should expect that, but it's not bad whatsoever. But if I have to really nitpick, yeah, I would have to give AGD and the 41 the win here. So I kept pushing these speakers back towards the wall and around two feet from the wall behind it to the front baffle is where I found to be still acceptable. And yes, you're getting more bass than when you have it at three and a half feet away from the wall. But um, I still think it's the bass is controlled. I still think it's very listenable, a very good performance, uh, exactly how, how I described it, just a little bit more bass at two feet. Um, I wouldn't go any further into the wall because then I get boomy bass. But that's depending on the room, that's just my room. Every room is gonna be slightly different. But safe to say, I don't think these speakers are meant to be like placed right up against the wall with those six ports. So just keep that in mind. So that's pretty much it for me. I hope this video was enjoyable, entertaining, informative. And if it was any of the three, then consider clicking on that like button. It helps my channel out greatly and it doesn't cost you anything. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Also, if you're curious about comparisons, let me know in the comment section which speakers you would like me to compare to the X2s. And I might just make that comparison. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Like